Hi, I'm Peter Charles, and welcome to my Beginner's Fly Tying Series. Today we're going to do a streamer. It's called the Mickey Fin, and it's a very, very effective uh, bucktail pattern. And I've caught lots of fish on it. I've caught trout and smallmouth bass, pike, and a few other species on it. It works really, really well. And it's quite a simple pattern to tie, and you'll have an opportunity to learn a few simple techniques, including how to do a uh, tinsel body and how to tie in a bucktail wing. So let's get started. Let's start by looking at our materials. First off, our hook. It's a Mustad size 6 streamer hook. Our thread is a uni thread black in 6 aught. The body is made out of mylar, size 12 in a gold silver, and we'll be using the silver side up. The tin silver we'll use is uni French in an oval in a medium size silver. And the wing is a bucktail in yellow and in red. Let's start by tying on our thread. We're going to start around the hook point, put a few wraps in, locking it in, and we trim off the tag. Now when tying a body that has more than one component, we always tie in the item that we wind last, we tie it in first. So last is first. When you tie in tinsel, bring it in from behind, and we want it about the hook length just a smidge short. A couple of wraps. Now I'm just going to twist that so it goes underneath. There we go. Now I'll put that in my material keeper here at the back of the vise. And now we tie on our mylar. Mylar, uh, it comes in gold and silver. One side's gold, one side's silver. And one of the features of mylar is that when we tie it in, uh, we tie in gold side facing us because when we flip it over and begin to tie, it will show up as silver. So I'll just make that the full length, same as before. And a couple of wraps. And again, I'll slide that underneath. We want our material to be under the hook. And the reason for this is we want to tie a nice smooth body. So by putting a material under the hook, it's out of the way. And I'll show you how uh, we can make the body look nice and smooth with some nice, neat wraps. So first off, I'm just going to keep this underneath. and I'm just going to make a, a few small wraps. And we just check. Just give that a little twist. Okay, it's underneath. Now we'll make our neat wraps going back. Now you could do without that step, but you'd end up with a, a body of the fly that looks a little lumpy. So we're trying to avoid that. We want it to look neat. It's a good idea to get into these habits of doing things neat, uh, even though they might result in some extra work. Now we're going to tie this off using a half hitch tool. I place the tool on the thread, and I wind the thread over, and I move it onto the eye of the hook, and drop it down. I'll make one more, and slide it off. There we go. Now I'll bring my bobbin holder around. I'm using a rotary vise, and that vise allows me to turn the vise uh, while keeping the hook shank level. And you'll see as I wind this uh, tinsel and this uh, mylar on that it becomes quite neat and easy to do. Let's start with the mylar. I tied it in with the gold facing forward, and now that I'm beginning to wrap, you'll see that I have the silver side facing me. We start with a wrap right at the back. Now we're going to come forward and we're going to do what's called touching turns. And we don't want any thread to show. And we want each turn of the mylar to be touching the one before with no gaps. So if I had a bright orange thread, for example, you wouldn't see any bright orange underneath. We just take our time doing this. 
and we keep a nice tension on this mylar. We don't want it to slip. The noise you're hearing is I'm just sliding my fingers down the mylar. Here we go. Uh, one more turn. Now I'm going to tie the mylar off. Keep tension on it so it doesn't spring. I lock it in both ways. And I pull it up. Trim it off. Now I'm just going to clean that up a little bit so the end doesn't come apart. Now I'm going to do a half hitch. This time I'm going to use my fingers instead of a half hitch tool. Now we're ready to wind the uh, silver oval tinsel on and we keep the uh, turns fairly broad. Make one extra turn. And now we wrap that off. Keep it again nice and tight so it doesn't spring out on you. And trim off. Now we'll just clean that end bit off here. This is going to get covered by our uh, bucktail wing so we don't have to worry about it too much. Now we're going to start our bucktail wing and in this case with the Mickey Finn it starts with a yellow bottom layer, a red middle and a yellow top. Now when working with bucktail we always work with the tip, not the base of the bucktail. And there's a reason for that. The base is hollow. And if we were to tie this on and wrap it tight, it will splay like this. It will just, you'll end up with the uh, very, very spiky look to the way the uh, bucktail lays down. The hair at the top, however, is solid. And because of that, we're able to wrap it tight and it stays put. It doesn't splay. So I'm going to cut off a little bit of bucktail to start. Here we go. There's our bucktail cut. Now... The uh, bottom of the bucktail has some short fibers in it, so I'm going to grab it by the top, and I'm going to go over my garbage can, and I'll strip out all the short stuff. There we go. Now I want this wing to be roughly twice the length of the body. I hold it in position. Now I'm going to cut that over my uh, garbage can. Now when tying on bucktail, you start with a what we call a pinch loop, and then you pull slowly tight. And we'll just clean that up. And the purpose for that pinch loop is to keep all of the hair on top of the body. If we just started wrapping, it would roll around the body and, and it would look bad. Now, because we're putting twice as much yellow as red, we want our red uh, part of the wing to be a little thicker. So I'm grabbing a little bit more bucktail than I did before. Okay, now that we've cleaned up the red, we'll just size it. Now I'll trim it. I'll position it. And again, as before, we use that pinch loop. The purpose of the pinch loop is to keep everything on top. we we'll put a few wraps in now. What we'll do here is we'll spend a few moments and we'll twist it into position. We want a little bit of yellow on both sides and we want it to be straight. And I can see I've got a few strays in there. So I'm just going to come in with my scissors and cut those strays off. Otherwise I'll be sticking up afterwards. There we go. So hold the wing in place. And I'll just wrap that down nice and smoothly and evenly. Now the last bit of yellow. Just bring that back a little bit. Again, use a pinch loop. Now check to make sure we should see some red on both sides. Okay, I've got a little bit more. You can see I have a little bit more here than I do here, so I'll give that a push over. 
If it won't move, take a couple of wraps off. There we go. Nice smooth wraps towards the end. If it skids a little bit, just fill the space up. Just even up the head, make it look neat. Now, what we do at the back end of the head, we put in some soft wraps. And the purpose for the soft wraps is to get the wing to lay down nice and smoothly. Now we just wrap forward to finish this off. There we go. Now we get a whip finisher out. We'll lengthen the thread. And you can see I put the hook and the dent together. And I create that cross. You see the cross there in the thread right here? I'm going to wind that over three times. And slide the dent out. And then I bring that hook down. Slowly remove the hook. There we go. Just get in there nice and tight with the scissors. Now at this point is ready for the head cement. I'm using a water-based cement to begin with. I use the water-based cement so it'll penetrate into the fibers, into the threads, hold everything in place. And when this is dry, I'll get in there with a gloss head cement to make it uh, look nice and neat and have a nice finished shiny appearance. There we go. All we need to do is put on some glossy head cement and we're ready to go fishing. Enjoy.